So let's slide over to the second page on radicals, guys. We are going to be simplifying radicals um, over the next month and then the following month and then in the spring. They're not going away. And I know like simplifying radicals kind of gets hit on a little bit, um, but it's definitely not um, covered very well. So let me help you through this because we're definitely going to need this skill. First off, list all the perfect squares, 1 through 225. This is going to be a reference sheet. You're going to be glad you have this. So let's put it here. We've got 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 16, 25, 36. 7 times 7 is 49, 64. 9 times 9 is 81. you got 100, 121, 144 is 12 times 12. Usually students get that far. And honestly, we're not going to need much more. So 13 times 13 is 169. 14 times 14 is 196. Notice I just changed those last two numbers. So if you can remember 13, you got 14. And 15 is that 225. So if, you've only, if you only know 12, you're almost there. But honestly, we are probably only going to need maybe that many to help us simplify our radicals. So let's talk about number seven, the square root of 24 sim, um, expressed in simplest radical form. Don't change it to a decimal because it's going to be an irrational number. You're going to have to round it, and now it's not the same number, and we've made a mess. So let's talk about um, simplifying it in radical form, square root of 24. So what you want to do is rewrite it, kind of uh, kind of factor it, write it as two radicals that were multiplied together to make 24. So I want to think about the factors of 24 um, and find one, find a factor of 24 that's a perfect square. So this is what my brain's doing. So this is what we're doing. 24, not 1 times 24, probably not 2 times 12, um, 3 times 8. Have I um, come up with any numbers that are in that perfect square list? But what do I have next? 4 times 6. Ha ha. 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite this as a square root of 4 times a square root of 6. This is good because now I can take the square root of 4. I know what that is. The square root of 4 is 2, and it comes out of the radical as plain old 2. And there is nothing more I can do with 6. 6 does not have any perfect square factors. I can't break him down any further. So that's all we can do. We can change the square root of 24 to 2 radical 6. Final answer. Let's do it again. Number 8, square root of 90. You want to do the same thing. I'm going to rewrite it as two radicals that were multiplied together. Factors of 90, one being a perfect square factor. Any coming to mind? Probably 9 times 10. Yeah? Because I know the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is what? Three, like normal three, no radical out of the radical, and nothing more I can do with 10. 10 doesn't have any perfect square factors, so I'm through. Square root of 90 is equal to three radical 10. Number nine, the square root of 72. I want to rewrite it as two radicals that were multiplied together. So think, hmm. Did you come up with 9 times 8? There's another choice that's better. I'll show you. But 9 times 8 works. I know the square root of 9 is 3. But hold on. Wait, time out. Square root of 8. Wait, it has also perfect square factor of 4 times 2. So we would have to break that down again. You have to keep simplifying until there are no more perfect square factors in your radical. Your other better choice, your fast track choice that students often overlook is 36 times two. You want to find the biggest number. Um, so if you are scratching your brain, you're like, Miss Brian, I don't know. I don't know which one it should be. So take 72, for example, number nine, take 72 in your calculator, divide it by four divided by 9, divided by 16. You want to keep dividing until you get an even division, right? So you just want to keep going in. Um, you may 
get to nine, you're like, I win. Go ahead. Try Try the bigger one. 72 is just one of those that now in my brain, I'm like, mm, that's the one that's got the 36. Um, because the square root of 36 is six radical two. And that's done. That's my final answer. So how do we go from that to this? So um, earlier we had three times here we had the square root of four. That's two. Three times two radical two. And there it is. Three times two is six. So either pathway you go, you should get to the same place. You just got to make sure in your radical you don't have any more perfect square factors. You want to simplify it all the way down. All right, so let's look at number 10, bringing in those variables. I know you're just thrilled. They're not so bad. I'm going to walk you through it super easy. So the square root of x squared. Side note, what's the square root of 4? 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4, right? So we're going to do the same idea with the square root of x squared. What multiplied together is x squared? x times x is x squared. Therefore, the square root of x squared is x. Done. Let me show you again. Number 11, the square root of n to the 6. Thinking about those exponent rules. That's why we went over exponent rules first. You have m cubed times m cubed is m to the 6 because we add those exponents. So the square root of m to the 6 is m cubed. What about number 12, the square root of y to the fifth? Hmm. Now notice we can only take a square root when it's even. Number 10, it was x squared. Number 11 was m to the sixth. When they are even, I can take a square root. So what if it's y to the fifth? Well, let's change it. Kind of the strategy we did above. I'm going to change it to my highest even exponent, y to the fourth times y to the first. I'm going to separate them. So if it's odd, I'm going to separate it into my largest even and the one left over. Because now I can take the square root of y to the fourth. That's y squared. There's nothing I can do with a, a single variable in a radical. He's just always going to have to stay there. So in the past, I've told students, your variables have to come out in pairs. And so if there's one solo guy left in, he's just going to have to stay in by himself. So we're going to take odd exponents, separate them as radicals into highest even, the one and the one left over. This is our final answer right there. Y squared radical Y. We're going to do it again. We're going to keep going because here's 13. We've got the square root of a squared and b cubed. There are two things in that radical. Just for simplicity, I'm going to show them separately. I've got the square root of a squared. I've got the square root of b cubed, but I'm going to use the strategy we did on the last problem. I'm going to break that up into my largest even, which would be b squared, and one left over, which would add up to 3. From here, you can take the square root of those even exponents. The square root of a squared comes out as a. The square root of b squared can come out as b. There is nothing you can do with that single b in a radical. They have to come out in pairs. Looking at 14, pulling everything we've talked about together. Square root of 54, x to the fourth, y to the sixth. So, for simplicity, there are three things in that radical. Let me show them all separate. All right, start with 54. Square root of 54, we want to go back to the very beginning. Look at separating it as two radicals that were multiplied together, thinking about the factors of 54, finding one that's a perfect square. So 54, that could be um, 9 and 6. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to keep. Um, working on, mm, no, let me go ahead. So the square root of 9 is 3, and there's nothing more I can do with radical 6. Let's look at x to the 4th. Now it's even, so the square root of x to the 4th would be x squared. Now he's out of the radical. Don't think he's in my final answer radical. Um, and then let's look at the y to the 6th. 
take the square root of y to the 6 and you get y cubed. Also not in my radical final answer. Let me pull it all together. I've simplified each piece separately. Let me bring it together for final answer. Outside, everything that's on the outside, I've got a 3. I've got x squared, y cubed, and the only thing left in the radical is y to the 6. Final answer. 15 has stuff on the outside. Don't worry about it. Leave the 2a on the outside. We will combine him with whatever else comes out later. And let's separate. I've got three things under my radical. I've got a number, I've got a's, and I've got b's. I know the square root of 36 is 6. Now, things that come out of the radical are going to multiply together. So you can see my multiplication symbol there. Looking at my a's, the square root of a to the fifth, odd. I can only take square roots of even exponents. So let me rewrite that as a to the fourth and a to the first. And b is even, so that's going to be good. I'm going to be able to take care of that. 2a, the 6 came out. The square root of a to the fourth is a squared outside the radical. Um, this guy's going to have to stay. I'm going to leave him for a minute. Um, square root of b to the fourth will come out as b squared. And now I'll write my leftover, who's left in the radical at the end. It's almost done. Clean it up. So we've got numbers being multiplied together. 2 times 6 is 12. Notice you have two sets of a's there. You've got an a to the first and a squared. Those add up to a cubed. b squared radical a square root of a, whichever way you want to say it. There you go, 12a cubed, b squared, square root of a. Woo. 16 also has stuff on the outside. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to combine it when we finish. So I'm just going to write it out there to the side. I've got three things inside my radical. Square root of 8 is not a perfect square, so let me separate it into 4 times 2. x cubed is odd, so let me separate that to an x squared and an x. The y is even, so that's going to be able to come out completely. xy cubed. Square root of 4 comes out as 2. Square root of 2 is going to stay for a minute. He's going to have to stay in the radical. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of a single x will have to stay in the radical. Square root of y to the fourth is y squared. And then who have I not crossed out? I still have in the radical 2x. I've got everybody in their right place, but now let's combine all those things that were on the outside in front. You've got a 2 coefficient. You've got two x's, so x squared, and then add up your y's, y to the fifth square root of 2x. Final answer. 17 also has stuff out in front. Not even worried about it. Take care of that later. I've got a couple things in the radical. I'm going to separate those for my eyes so I don't miss anything. All right, square root of 175. Are you thinking 25? I'm thinking 25. So um, what is that going to be? 7? 25 times 7. I'm thinking about quarters and $1.75. I would have 7 quarters. Um, square root of x to the 7th is odd, so break it up into an x to the 6th and a single x. Same with y. y to the 6th, single y. Square root of 25 is 5. Nothing I can do with the 7. The square root of x to the 6 is x cubed. Nothing I can do with a single x. Square root of y to the 6, y cubed. Can't do anything with that one. Who's left inside? 7xy. Clean up everybody that's out in front. You had a 5 coefficient. Pull together all your x's, x to the 5th. Pull together all your y's to the 6. Square root of 7x. Eighteen stuff in front. How much do I care? Not at all. Just gonna let that chill for a minute. I'm gonna separate. Square root of thirty-six. I'm excited. 
square root of 36 is 6. We actually have an easy problem for our last problem. Square root of x to the 6 is x cubed, and square root of y to the 6 is y cubed. So I didn't have to do a whole lot here. Now just combine everything. 6 times 6 is 36. Now, some students might go, ooh, square root of 36. Wait, 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 36 is not in a radical. 36 is just a number now. Like, breathe. <laughs> like, don't jump to conclusions. Slow down. Combine all your x's, x to the fourth. Combine all your y's, y to the sixth. Final answer, okay? So we covered a lot, but one of the beauties of this being a video is you can pause it, you can rewind it, you can watch it 200 times. So um, we covered exponents and radicals. And again, guys, those are going to keep coming back because we're going to use those as we work through problems in our Algebra 2 curriculum. So let me know if you have any questions on these. Again, feel free to watch the video as many times as you need to, and it will always be here for you to reference. So I'll see you in class.